It is customary for Boise State to confer an honorary doctoral degree upon a deserving individual each spring during the ceremony. We are very proud of this tradition and the significance it holds for all of us. An honorary doctorate is awarded to recognize an individual of outstanding accomplishment in scholarship, creativity, public service, education, and human welfare. There's a famous quote by the cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Today's honoree, Greg Carr, is the embodiment of that sentiment. Greg is originally from Idaho Falls. After graduating from Utah State University and receiving his master's degree from Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government, he found quick success as an early pioneer in telecommunications and the internet industry. But his successful business ventures never overshadowed his passion for human rights and philanthropy. In fact, they essentially provided the means he needed to pursue his passions full time, which he's been doing since 1999 when he created the Greg C. Carr Foundation and dedicated its resources to the environment, the arts, and human rights. Since that time, Greg has made an indelible impact in his home state of Idaho, at his alma mater, Harvard University, and even here at Boise State, where he has been involved with both the Frank Church Institute and the Andrus Center for Public Policy. One very notable and significant contribution of Greg's here in Idaho followed the court seizure of the former Aryan Nations compound in North Idaho. He purchased that property and turned it into a peace park, putting a positive end to a very divisive and ugly time in Idaho's history. Greg's influence and desire to help others and leave the world a better place go far, far beyond Idaho's borders. He has most recently launched the Gorongosa Park Restoration Project in Africa. Gorongosa Park, in its heyday, was referred to as the jewel of the Mozambique and was one of the most treasured areas in all of Africa for its high concentration of large mammals and its well-watered terrain. It was unique and beloved across the world, much like Yellowstone Park here in Idaho. Unfortunately, throughout the 1970s and 80s, a civil war waged the area, shelled the main camp, left thousands of animals slaughtered, and the park itself in ruins. While most contended that the park could not be recovered, Greg dove into the project and the opportunity to restore the region's natural habitat while creating sustainable jobs in science, tourism, conservation, and education. He has pledged $40 million over 30 years to the effort and has planned one of the largest animal reintroduction efforts on the continent, both record-setting commitments in the history of conservation in Africa. Greg leads this effort like the consummate optimist he is, and his actions recently spurred a documentary on Idaho Public Television, which some of you may have seen. Please watch the screen for some clips from that documentary and to learn more about this amazing Idahoan. There is a park, a stunningly beautiful park, halfway around the world. Every bit as wild as the wildest places in Idaho. Once ravaged and broken by years of warfare and neglect, Gorongosa National Park is making a comeback, thanks in part to a team of Idahoans led by this man, Greg Carr. We don't want to get to a point 100 years from now where rhinos have gone extinct or the only place you could see lions is in a zoo and not in the real world. But I'm an optimist. 
I think this is one of the places that there's a real chance of success. In Africa, you know, you see so much of the wildness disappearing. It's nice to be able to put some of it back. The other big objective is helping the people who live across the river, helping them with their schools, their health clinics, their farms. I think we'll get there. In the 1980s, Greg Carr revolutionized the business world by providing voicemail technology to telephone companies. He also served as chairman of Prodigy, an early internet service provider. A decade later, he transitioned from making money to judiciously giving it away. He founded the Carr Center for Human Rights Policy at Harvard University. And in short order, he co-founded the Museum of Idaho in Idaho Falls, helped develop the Idaho Human Rights Education Center in Coeur d'Alene, and the Anne Frank Memorial in Boise. So his interest in a national park located in a foreign country 10,000 miles away was a bit of a surprise even to him. In some ways, Gorongosa saved me because I turned 40 and I wasn't in the mood to start another high-tech company, even though that had been very fun. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I was a big believer in human rights, but the point is you want to get out and actually do something. You don't want to just talk about something. And what Gorongosa did is it gave me a mission for all the rest of the days of my life. And I've learned a lot, I've made friends. It's given me an entire philosophy of existence. And um, I just can't imagine where I would be if I hadn't done this. As, as you can probably tell from the way Greg tells his story, he's, he's not really big on tooting his own horn, as they say. So we didn't really share with him the fact that we were going to do this video for fear that he might tell us it wasn't a good idea. Uh, we thought it was a great idea, and I know I can tell you agree. A doctorate of humane letters serves to recognize an individual's contribution to the humanities or to human welfare. Greg Carr is so clearly deserving, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor and privilege to present a doctorate of humane letters to Mr. Greg C. Carr. I really didn't know they were going to show that uh, film clip. This is exciting. I, um, I get emotional at things like this. I just, I love education. And when, when a large group of you stood up who were the first from your families to graduate from college, I got tears going down my face. Congratulations to all of you. This is exciting. This is an important day. Uh, I want to, tomorrow's Mother's Day, and I just want to acknowledge my mom who's in the audience. Her family has been in Idaho. <laughs> uh, my mother's family has been in Idaho for a hundred years, and I love this state. And congratulations, President Kustra, and to all of you for the growth of Boise State. I've watched it my entire life. Uh, when I was in junior high school, Boise State was, was a two-year college, and I've watched it grow into a major university, and I'm so proud. President Custer talked about the thrill of intellectual pursuits, and that's what I want to talk about for a minute here today. Research, discovering new knowledge, that's what universities do. And why is it important? 
whether it's the life sciences, whether it's the natural sciences, the human society, we still don't really know a lot of what happens on planet Earth. We're still unlocking mysteries. This year, a group of Boise State professors and students in the pursuit of knowledge are on their way to Africa. They're going to Gorongosa Park that you just saw to work with us and to help us do research. Now, Gorongosa, you saw some beautiful, beautiful images. It lies in the Great Rift Valley. And the Great Rift Valley is where Homo sapiens evolved about 200,000 years ago. And I was with some scientists last year when they found a one million year old stone cutting tool that would have been crafted by a species called Homo erectus that's a precursor to Homo sapiens. And to stand there and to hold this object, it just gave me goosebumps. And that's what the thrill of discovery is. And that's what research is all about. Gorongosa, as you saw in those, in those images, has tremendous biodiversity. And what, what is biodiversity? It's the four billion year story of the evolution of life on Earth. From a single cell to the millions and millions of different species that inhabit this planet with us from elephants down to the tiniest thing. And we still don't know how many species we have on Earth. Scientists have given names to two million species. There may be as many as 10 million. And even for the two million species that have a name, we don't know very much about 95% of them. We don't know their life cycle. We don't know how they fit in the ecosystem, the role they play. What an exciting thrill to discover all of this. And it's urgent because as human society expands and our cities grow and our farms grow and our industries and our minds grow, we can sometimes erase an entire rainforest or as you saw in this film, war, which happened in Africa, can wipe out a lot of species. And if habitats disappear, the species can go extinct. We might lose a lot of these millions of species before we've even given them a name. But I'm an optimist, and I believe that does not have to happen. That's why we have national parks. That's why we have great wilderness areas, to protect wild spaces. And it's important for us because we humans depend on nature. Nature gives us our food, our fuel, our fiber. Nature cleans our water, cleans our air, cycles nutrients in soil. So if we lose a lot of species on this planet, it's not just sad. I'm afraid our economy would go with it. But that won't happen. Here in Idaho, we have some of the largest and most beautiful wilderness of any of the 50 states. And we love our wilderness. And we study it. And Boise State professors study it. And they can take that knowledge to Africa and help us understand that continent. This year, professors and students from the Intermountain Bird Observatory are on their way to Gorongosa to monitor our bird population. We don't even know how many bird species we have in Gorongosa. We've never had a chance to study it properly. Some people say we might have the most bird species of any place in Africa. Boise State professors are going to track this and monitor it and find out what we have so that we can protect it. And they're going to put tracking devices on some birds and follow them by satellite that migrate all the way to Europe or all the way to Asia, all the way back again. That's exciting, and it's important for conservation. Other parts of Boise State are getting involved. The Geosciences Department is going to come and get involved. I mentioned a moment ago 
Boise State lies in the great rift where our species, I said Boise State, that's funny. <laughs> that, that's a stretch. G Gorongosa, believe it or not, I'll connect those two thoughts in a moment. Gorongosa lies in the great rift where our species evolved. And much of the same flora and fauna that we have in Gorongosa now is the same as it was 200,000 years ago. So what that means is when we visit Gorongosa, we're seeing and hearing and smelling and experiencing an ecosystem that's largely the same as it was at the dawn of our species. And when we protect it, we're protecting it for all of eternity going forward. And Boise State will have some buildings in Gorongosa with their name on it, doing research. So maybe that's how I can say that Gorongosa, that, that Boise State lies in the Great Rift Valley. <laughs> I got myself out of that jam. Well, I've been talking about Africa, but I could be talking about any corner of this planet or any corner of Idaho where all of you will bring your talents and help us to understand this world and help us to make a better world. Thank you for this honorary doctorate, and I look forward to getting to know lots of you in the coming years.